Jambo Rafiki, I'm Elizabeth from Kasiwa82 and I hope you're doing really well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. It's Tuesday, so it's time for another Tuesday, um, TBR Tuesday. And what I'll be doing today is going through and showing you my latest haul for my library. As always, it's an embarrassment of riches, but there's some books in here that I'm really excited about getting to. Before we get into that, however, in case you were not familiar, the Newburyport Literary Festival is taking place this weekend. That's, it from, that's in Newburyport, Massachusetts, and which is the area I'm in, is the greater Boston area. And this year, as, as the same as last year, they're doing the Literary Festival via Zoom. So the entire thing is online and it is free. So it's, if you're watching this when it goes live, this weekend is when the festival is taking place and on Sunday, um, the 25th of April, I'll be talking to the author of Displacement, Kiko Hughes, about her comic. So that takes place this Sunday, the 25th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's free. It's virtual. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Please join and listen to a conversation with Kiku. And if you have any questions, if you have not picked up this book already, I recommend you check it out and um, join us to talk to the author and we can answer all those burning questions you have. So let's jump into the hall. So April is National Poetry Month here in the U.S. And so as usual, I tend to have a couple of poetry collections going. I am about halfway through Margaret Atwood's new one. It's called Dearly. It's a collection of new poems. Some of these work better for me than others, but again, it's Atwood. And when she's good, she's really, really good. I also have Lord of the Butterflies by Andrea Gibson. So this one looks like it has a bit more um, prose poetry in it. And um, really looking forward to that. I don't think I've read any of this author's work before. So I'm excited to dive in. As always, I will put a list of the books and all the information, authors, translators, all that good stuff down below in the description box. So if you want to take a look at any of those in detail, go ahead and go down there. I'm also participating in the Invisible Cities project, and that's where we read translated works from three countries uh, every month. And I, if you take a look, I'll leave a link for that particular project and the books I've read to date. And I've already read the first one for the month of April, and this is La Barstara, and it's a novel from Equatorial Guinea. Really um, interesting. I would love to talk to you more about that and stay tuned for that review. I also picked up from Vietnam. So the countries for April are Equatorial Guinea, Vietnam, and Peru. So from Vietnam, I picked up The Boat by Nam Lee. This is a collection of short stories. And I have this one both on ebook as well as audio um, and print. So I'm going to be interested to see which way um, connects with me the most. The other book that I currently have in process is The Best American Travel Writing. The 2020 edition is edited by Robert McFarlane. I picked this book up at the beginning of the year. I'm about, I think, five or six essays in. It had to go back to the library, so I had to return it, and I've got it back. So I'm looking to, forward to finishing this up, hopefully this month. And as always, there's comics, right? Now, there's books that are not comics here as well, but let's go through these just in the order I'm picking them up. I have the manga series Blue Blood. So look at these covers. So cool. So this is a YA manga series. And my understanding is the, this particular series follows a young boy who wants to become an artist. So I think it's about um, how do you create? How are you creative? The first installment is got is uh, subtitled Still Life. And the second one is Composition. So. There's always manga, really looking forward to that one. As I've mentioned before, I think nonfiction comics are a really great way to dive into topics that I'm not as familiar with. And I have picked up The Challenger Disaster, Tragedy in the Skies. Now again, I, I, as with most of us, I think I'm aware 30,000 foot level of um, the, the events around the Challenger Disaster, but I don't know the specifics and I'm hoping that this which is a uh, graphic novel, a history graphic novel, will give me a little bit more information. So really excited about that one as well. 
Flamer by Mike Curato. Now, this one has been on my list for a while. I think I've seen so many people talk about it in my Goodreads community. And as always, a link to my Goodreads account is linked down below if you'd like to go there and say hi. This particular one, if here's what it says on the back, okay? I know I'm not gay. Gay boys like other boys. I hate boys. They're mean and scary, and they're always destroying something or saying something dumb or both. I hate that word, gay. It makes me feel unsafe. So this is a YA, and I think it's more more the middle grade uh, age group of YA as opposed to kind of the more older version of YA, but we'll see when I get into that. Um, this one is another YA, and I do think I know that this is middle grade. It's Sheets. And um, I believe it's a story of a young girl who works in her parents' laundromat or her family laundromat. The art is, uh, I love the colors, right? the, the, the mid younger grade, um, middle grade kind of YA have got really cute graphics. And clearly there's some supernatural being in the mix. So I picked this one up because the second installment of this comic series came out just recently and I wanted to dive into that. So I figured might as well start with the first one. This is an adult comic called Patience and Esther, an Edwardian Romance. Now, listen to this. It says, sensual, sweet, beautifully illustrated, Patience and Esther is a steamy period romance and an inspirational erotic journey across the epic sweep of history from the end of a gilded age to the start of an uncharted future. I mean, really, right? You had me at Edwardian Romance. So this looks like an interracial couple. Um, Really looking forward to that one as well. Priest Daddy, the author of Priest Daddy, Patricia Lockwood, she, she was really buzzy when her Priest Daddy book came out. I did not read that one. But this one is called No One Is Talking About This. And again, I don't know much about this other than I believe it has something to do with social media and just how people um, interact with social media and the repercussions of that. Could be wrong, but I'm looking forward to that one. The next one I have is by Anna North. It's Outlawed. Now, again, I thought I had read a book by Anna North before, and it turns out this is the only one I have of hers. I, but look at this cover, first of all. Secondly, here's what it says on the inside. In the year of our Lord, 1894, I became an outlaw. It's a 17-year-old girl. It looks like a Western. Yeah, you know me in Westerns. I'm, I'm sold. On the Ed Brubaker comic, so if you've looked at some of my recent, recent, uh, re recent read wrap-ups, you know that I really enjoyed his Western pulp. And this one is uh, Cruel Summer, where he teams up with Sean Phillips. Now, I tend to really like Brubaker's stories, as well as he teams up with artists who do um, really kind of moody. I love the colors and um, the artwork, very evocative of what he's capturing. So all I know about this is it says, it's a sprawling story of fathers and sons, love and crime and murder, right? There's always art books, and you've seen that in some of my other hauls. This one is called the Collage Ideas book. And again, while I don't necessarily um, do or follow along with the artwork, I just think looking at art it's almost like walking through a museum gallery without leaving your house. It's a, it's, a, it's a gallery in your hands. And so it's always I always find inspiration when I look at books like that. And speaking of art, here's one, Ameri American Utopia, David Byrne and Mara Kalman. Now, I happen to really like Mara Kalman. It says, despite all that has happened, despite all that is still happening, I think there is still possibility. We are still a work in progress. The thing I was surprised about this is, for some reason, the art is more sketchy than I was expecting it to be, but I'm interested to dive in and see whether I like it or not. If you've looked at, again, my recent reads, I've been talking about Dune. I read the first book in the original trilogy, loved it, gave it five stars. There's a review for that on my channel for this year. And I just finished the second book in the series, Dune Messiah, Really love that one as well. Stay tuned. A review of that will be coming out in the next week. So while I am in between the book two and book three, this popped at my library. It's the Dune graphic novel. It's the first book. 
And you know, I can't I can't get enough of this world. I can't get enough of the of the story here. So I thought, let me dive into this. I'm just loving how the uh, colors look, and cannot wait for the movie adaptation. Right? Cannot. Okay, uh, last four or five books here. The Haunting of Tram Car 015 by P. Jelly Clark. I talked about the first trilogy, the uh, first novella in this trilogy earlier this year. I really, really enjoyed this one. that one. I gave it four stars. I'm hoping this will be equally good. So the setting of this world is 1920s Cairo and there's supernatural beings, including jinn, roaming the streets. The first book um, investigates the murder of a jinn and we follow the POV of a female detective. This one, it looks like we have a male POV. I tried the audiobook on this, and for some reason, the audiobook narrator just simply wasn't working for me. So I returned that to the library, picked up a uh, print version, and I'm hoping to really love that. Again, these are really quick, so one sitting and we're done. Speaking of one sitting and done, here is Noir, a collection of crime comics. So this is an anthology. It's got a variety of different authors and artists in here. Love the kind of moody black and white noir style. Now look at how thin this book is. Again, right? One sitting and done, I'm sure. A book I've been really excited to get my hands on is The Bone Maker by Sarah B Beth Durst. I read Racing the Sands, which was a YA standalone fantasy that um, she released, I think it was last year or the year before last. I really enjoyed that one. It wasn't, I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to, but I liked the writing, I liked the world building. And so when I saw she had a new adult fantasy, I thought, okay. And again, adult fantasy standalones are like unicorns. They're so hard to come by. So really looking forward to this one. It's more of a chunkster, but she tends to write very fast paced books that, from what I can tell. So all I know about this one is it says, it's a standalone epic fantasy set in a brand new world of towering mountains and sparkling cities in which a, a band of aging warriors has a second chance to defeat dark magic and avenge a haunting loss. I am so there for that. Three o'clock in the morning. I do not remember where I saw this book talked about. Somebody I follow either on Goodreads or on YouTube, and if I can remember who that person is, I will definitely link them down below. But again, this is a really short book. All I know about this one is it's a coming of age story about a father and a son, dreams and regret, and most of all, love. Really looking forward to this. As I said, very slim novel. I love the cover art on this one. This is probably one of those cover buys for me. Well, cover requests for me, but um, I'll let you know what I think about that. And finally, I have Invisible Differences, a story of Asperger's, adulting, and living a life in full color. This is an adult comic, and again, I kind of, when I, when I first took a look at it, I loved, I liked how the art looked, and um, I'm looking forward to just exploring what the author does here. So that's translated uh, for the very first time into English. I'm not sure what the original language is. It might be French, but again, I will leave the link down below. Um, so you can take a look at it. It certainly looks like it's French. It does not say very quickly over here. Anyway, so that's the, the final one that I have in this collection in this haul. If you have read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts about them. If there's some that you would like me to move up the priority list, certainly let me know. I'm looking to get through most of, this books, the, most of these books in the next um, several weeks, so stay tuned for reviews on that. And again, I hope to see you at the uh, Zoom webinar for the conversation I'm going to have with Kiku Hughes about displacement. It's Sunday, April 25th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. I hope to see you there. Please let me know what you're reading. And until I talk to you next time, happy reading. Bye.